All right, welcome everybody to the Hello Game Day podcast. This is the first edition of the Stage 4 Lockdown uh, podcast, I guess we'll call it. I've got myself, we've got Ponchi and Dion Prestia joining us today. We've also got Took Miller in the corner over here, if you can see his head to my left there. <laughs> Ponchi, give Dion the, uh, the wrap-up that he deserves, brother. Absolutely. So uh, we've got the impress here on the show. And first and foremost, I'm wrapped. Uh, Richmond player, first on the show. And I've grown up as a Tigers supporter. So I'm very excited to have him on. Uh, he's a Colton Cannons boy. Got drafted pick nine in the 2010 draft to the Gold Coast Suns. Dion Prestia, thank you very much for coming on. And if you could, I didn't prep you on this, but give us a hello game day. <laughs> hello game day. Yeah. There, you go, lovely. there it is. <laughs> I usually see Cook when we play Gold Coast as well. Usually he's. Peeking around the corners, I mean, all the time, <laughs> following me back. He's we always watching. make it comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, what we'll do, mate, is we'll get up into stitch-ups early. Um, yeah. So we've obviously, like I said, there's a few that have been sent in from a few boys. But the first one is a photo that we're sending in, mate. And I think this was, uh, it was a bit uh, off for the Richmond Football Club to be posting this Instagram of you with your dog. But... What's going on in the background is a little bit sus. So, Moosey, we chuck this up on the screen for us. And if you could just tell us what's going on here in the background, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> I actually remember seeing someone sent me this guy. That's, that's me dog, Leo. Yeah. He's, he's great. But he's a... Uh, I know that looks pretty sus, the uh, pink thing. Yeah. But it's actually a flamingo from Pet Barn. I think it's from Pet Barn. <laughs> and it's a flamingo. <laughs> it's the most rogue flamingo I've ever seen. That's his, toy, toy little, that's his corner where all the toys sit. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like he's where all the little toys sit. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, nah. <laughs> I say this without making it sound good. <laughs> we'll just call it a laundry mishap. Yeah. Uh, we'll, go to the, we'll go to the next stitch up. So. Um, the next one, mate, is I heard that uh, in your final exams for year 12, uh, you, you've gone in and, uh, you know, you're finishing up the year, you put a lot of effort and work into the year, and on one of the final exam answers, you've written the lyrics, all the lyrics to 21 questions by 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> is there truth to that? Who have you been talking to? School from my school. Um, Neil... Yeah, it's nearly true. So <laughs> it wasn't year 12 exams, but it was like a English sack. So it wasn't, it wasn't as important as, a, as an exam, but I did do that. I had, no, oh. I had nothing. I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, um, it'll kind of make sense. Well, to be fair, I got told to put mail on that. So that was the extended <laughs> mail of the final year exam. It was nearly true. Yeah. Another one, mate, was that, um, and this isn't much of a sit up. I reckon, if anything, this paints you as a really good bloke. Um, in Pittsburgh, you're in the off season uh, trip with the boys, and you've had a couple of cordials. You're feeling the emotions of the night, and you've come across <laughs> a homeless man, and you've you've felt very sorry for him. And at the kindness of your heart, you've you've given him a couple of bucks um, because you felt bad for him, but you've also shed a tear for the bloke. <laughs> Is there any truth to that? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty true. I, I didn't cry. At least I know now who you got the mail off, the, the, mail, it, yeah. the mail from, which is good. But yeah. Um, yeah, so there was a few of us went over to Pittsburgh for an off-season trip and um, we, uh, yeah, we ordered way too much food. So I'm like, oh, why not help out everyone else in the community? So did that. Felt good about myself. No, you're, you're, you're a good man. You're an absolute... <laughs> Stand-up <laughs> citizen, so we appreciate that. Now, another one, mate, is that um, you live with your host family up out in Hel Helensvale, yep. and uh, what I've heard is that it was a bit of a grim setup. And was it true that your dinners were only uh, frozen steaks every night? That's what you kind of copped in your first years. <laughs> um, yeah, it was because um, there was so many of us drafted. So I think it was about 22 18-year-olds on the coast. We um yeah we were at a host family out in Helensvale, so I thought that was the Gold Coast. Never been the been to the Gold Coast before. Saw Movie World, Dream World. I'm like, oh yep, this is this is it. And um yeah, it was a 
there wasn't much to do out there. That's <laughs> let's say that. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think they were they were prepared for two hungry eighteen year olds um, coming coming in. So <laughs> well, I will give them a bit of credit though. Because apparently, mate, they were very accommodating. Now, as the story goes, <clears throat> apparently they were so accommodating that they'd lend you the purple Ford Falcon with a mint spoiler. And you used to take that as an 18, 19 year old down Cav Ave, pumping Drake and Little Wayne out the, uh, out the car to get a bit of attention. Is that true? Um, yeah, that's pretty true. <laughs> they gave <laughs> a purple car. They owned, they owned a panel beater shop. So they, were, they had plenty of cars to, to go around and... Um, Oh, well, we had nothing else to do, so we're like, hey, we'll go to Perth's Paradise and drive around. So, yeah, oh, that's mate, it's a I'll accept that it's true. <laughs> Can we confirm that the song was the motto by Drake and Lil Wayne? <laughs> was oh, the there would have been a few songs. I reckon we did it more than once. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a few reference. we had a few schoolies trips up here, so I think we did it more than once. I could picture for that. reference for people who haven't been on the Gold Coast, uh, Cav Ave is like Chapel Street in Melbourne, so yeah. do a few. <laughs> Chap laps with J- Drake and Little Wayne. I love it. Now, I was a boarder at St. Patrick's College in Ballarat, and I know how mean the boarders can be as well. So, yeah. I've heard a story that apparently at Assumption College, the boarders used to, used to uh, bully you and steal your lunch. Is there any truth to that? <laughs> He's all nice. <laughs> we do our work. <laughs> yeah. so, so, my mum was a pretty good cook, and obviously the boarders didn't get fed. So sometimes I would, I would have lunch for him. I would bring it up for me uh, for him. But then other days, I didn't want to give it, give it up. So I kept it in my locker. And everyone knew where my locker was and it was never locked. So um, if I had it in there in between first period and recess, I'd go back and there'd be stuff missing. And I just knew there was always like two, two or three of the boarders that would just go through my locker and just steal, steal um, lunches and everything else out of there. So... Um, I ended up carrying carrying my bag around with me for um, pretty much most of my year twelve year as well. That's hilarious. <laughs> when I was also about St. Pat's, uh, we um, so we used to play them in the Herald Sun Shield games. Yep. And um, I was in year ten playing and what there, and I remember there was this massive year twelve, and I was obviously pretty small um, for year ten playing in in uh, the first grade, and I remember this massive guy just tried to fight me. I don't know why he was trying to fight me out of all of them. And then he got kicked off the field and one of the teachers was the um, umpire and he told him to get stuffed and then he ended up getting expelled. So that's my memories of uh, St. Yeah. Pat's. <laughs> you, got <laughs> someone, you got someone expelled. <laughs> I don't know why he was trying to fight me. I, I don't, never had a fight in my AFL career in my life. Well, he I tried don't know to- why he was for me. He tried to fight the umpire as well, so I'm sure it wasn't anything that you said, mate. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. I would have been... Sh- he was massive. Like, he was man-child. So, I don't know <laughs> what he was thinking. They feed him well in the, in the country. Now, another <laughs> like, the next few ones that I've got for you, are, they're all pretty pretty loosely given to me, and I'm not really... I don't really have all of the juice, but apparently... You know where <laughs> you got some stuff, so it's we, anywhere. We don't divulge our sources. But <laughs> app- apparently, uh, BT, Brian Taylor has a bit of an obsession with your old man and saying live on air that your old man has gout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, so, oh, so with the backstory with Brian, I went to school with Jordan. So he's uh, second oldest. Um, and we're still really good mates now. Um, so I think my first couple of games, he really pumped me up a, a fair bit and started, he, he was pretty much the one that got meatball <laughs> um, going and yeah, I know he just. I, he, I don't think he's seen my dad for a while, but my dad has had gout for a long time here and there and stuff, and he just always mentions it. And, <laughs> and my dad, man, he works in the um, fruit wholesale market, and every time there's a game on, and he mentions it, he just cops it all week about having gout and um, yeah, always say Aussie and Delane watching him at home. So um, yeah, that's why usually why BT gives me a good rap every game. It's a it's a biz, it's a bizarre thing to bring up on air, but moving forward, I've got another few that are very loose. So I'm gonna just sort of give you the floor with these ones. Can you tell us about a poolside photo getting around from a Hong Kong footy trip? <laughs> yeah, that's a good photo. Did you have it? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually it wasn't a photo taken. It was someone was putting a story 
up. So they were showing us at the pool, filming, filming, going around. I think it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. It was our footy trip. So just eating casadillas, eating whatever <laughs> I wanted, beer. So it was like a pretty like, well, that's a couple of hours in, in, in footy trip day. So, and I just decided to stick my guts out as much as I can and everything else that was seen in it made it look massive. And um, I remember getting so many messages that afternoon after someone like had screenshotted and sent it, sent it around just saying like, Jesus, what have you been doing over there? It was only a week out from the season. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, mate, what happens on footy trip? You eat what you want. Now, yeah, yeah. another one is that you were meant to meet up with Dustin Martin and Sean Grigg in LA. Is there any story behind that? Yeah, uh, half of it. So we, um, so me and Grigg went over there uh, 2018 uh, in the off season. So we get in LA Sunday morning and Dusty's already over there. So we call him and we're like, oh, organise a dinner for us. We're going to, we're going to the, um, one of the LA Rams were playing. So he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll organise it for you. I'll organise it for you. So fin- game finishes, get back to the hotel. We're like, oh, we'll call him. We'll see what, we- what we're doing tonight. No answer. No answer. Just don't hear from him at all. <laughs> and he was, he was actually staying down with the Cochins who are just um, in LA, but not in the city. So we called Koch and we're like, have you heard from Dusty lately? Like he was meant to organise dinner for us. He's like, oh yeah, he's in Mexico. So <laughs> no way. He, he just, I don't know what he did. He just went to Mexico, decided that he didn't want to get dinner. Any danger of letting you know? Yeah. I, I don't know what, what happened, what was going through his head. <laughs> oh, mate, that's impeccable. So, those are all the stitch ups we had for you to begin with. So, good. We, yeah, that was we put a bit good. of work into it. So, um, we had, a, and mate, everyone was jumping out of everywhere to stitch you up. So, you were probably one of the best and <laughs> easiest stitch ups. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into some serious chat. Now, your earlier years at the Gold Coast and specifically your first and second year, I kind of want you to just to touch on what it was like, like the culture um, and the lifestyle, a bunch of 18-year-old kids. <laughs> well, not kids, but, you know, you've just become becoming men. And, you know, what you guys kind of got up to uh, day in, day out during our pre-season and maybe outside the club? <laughs> Yeah, um, oh, it was pretty, looking back now, it was absolutely crazy to think so many of us were up there at one time. Um, so, yeah, I think there was, oh, I think there was about 22 18-year-olds. So, some, some went um, as 17-year-olds drafted and then obviously my draft, there was a lot of us and, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty weird. We had no idea about AFL and what it took I feel, and we just kind of rolled with whatever happened. So, um, I guess getting there, we didn't have a stadium, so Metricon wasn't wasn't built yet, and um, we were just training out kind of in this, like, paddock field kind of thing. But I guess for us or the 18-year-olds, we just thought it was what it was. Um, this is AFL, this is what it is, and you kind of just were happy to, to be on an AFL list, really, and it was a pretty good place to live, um, as I'm sure you guys have been up there a few times. So, um, yeah, we just kind of, we had no idea. Like, we were just happy to be there. Um, went along with training and thought it was absolutely awesome, which, which it was. And um, But away from the field, I don't know. I think it was just the same thing. We had absolutely no idea what it probably took to, to um, like, what an AFL player, I guess, should live, live like away from the club. So, um Obviously, there was a lot of young guys, so we went out a lot. It was uh, it was good, good fun because there was so many of us. Like you, you knew you'd go to a nightclub and just there'll be some boys there because it was all young, um, and I guess kids, young kids. <laughs> well, I guess we, I guess we, we were so, uh, but it was absolutely awesome. Like we had so much fun when we were um, when we were, when I was up here my first couple of years, especially. It was just so good to move moved out of home. What I think like two weeks after my last exam when I wrote that 21 questions lyric. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was just so, it was really like amazing life experience, that's for sure. Mate, that's awesome. So 
it almost seemed like from the outside uh, looking in, it was almost a bit of a, an apprenticeship for a lot of people over a few years. And I was wondering, uh, obviously, I love the club so much because obviously my ties are took and a few other boys. But where do you reckon in terms of you look at GWS's early days and your early days, where the club sort of went wrong early? Um, yeah, I know it's pretty hard to pick one thing. I think the best thing for GWS was that they got a look at what Gold Coast did and I guess they took what they did well, took what they didn't do so well. But um, I guess the facilities were probably the first thing. Um, it just wasn't ready, I guess. Like, we didn't have a stadium. I think our first home game at Metricom was round 11 or something like that against Geelong. Um, so we played a lot of our home games at the Gabba. Um, and then I guess the the age, I guess, demographic of, of us. So it was obviously dominated by... 18, 19 year olds who had no idea where I look at Richmond, who I'm obviously with now. And most of our list is from 24 to 28. So we all had our apprenticeship, I guess you can call it. And um, yeah, we played, most of us have played over a hundred games and it's just that experience, but it's not a back in your end of your career. Like it's everyone's pretty, pretty much in their prime or um, coming in or just coming out. So I think that's a, uh, the big, probably the biggest difference I find with the two teams. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And you, you touch on the, the facilities probably went up to scratch. I think one thing I also noticed is that you guys were had a gym inside a tin shed. And on the Gold Coast, when it's 30 degrees, it feels like 40 degrees in there. So you, you're doing extras when you're just doing normal training compared to other clubs. So another one I wanted to ask was um, <clears throat> the handover from Guy McKenna to Rodney Ede, the comparison in the coaches and also uh, any rocket sprays did you cop any of those <laughs> in your time yeah. <laughs> yeah rocket was rocket was a good coach but very odd very odd personality um oh, well, yeah same with same with bluey he was um well, he, oh, he was there for four years with me um and like absolutely legend of a leg, legend of a bloke like he i reckon he knew everyone's family's um, mum and dad's names, sisters, brothers, like he was incredible and um yeah, what he like he was just such a good good person and um yeah, I guess he was a bit stiff when uh when he got um uh, I guess the sack in the end because we only just missed finals and we looked like a pretty good team until uh Gaza Gaza Ablett hurt his shoulder. So um yeah and Rocket was I think, well, for me, I probably needed more time with Rocket. He only got um, two years out of us. But you could just see what a smart coach he was. And he did give a good spray every um, every now and then. So, I know he was a bit... I know, he was just a bit <laughs> different. I don't know how much I can say. Or say oh, I'm not saying... <laughs> yeah, it's up to your discretion. Um, no, nah, I don't know. He, he was very odd. Like, so, for example, it wasn't really a spray. He would kind of put in the meeting and be like, all right, down, like you shouldn't, you should be running better patterns. You should be um, like kind of challenge you. And then you would walk out and walk past him and he would pinch her and he'd be like, Oh, did I go a bit hard on you princess? <laughs> 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 things like that too. He's just like, Oh, I'm so confused. But like, that was him. Like he, he kind of, I guess, told you, told you exactly what it was like. And then he was able to have a joke with you after. So, Sometimes it was it was a bit confusing because you're just like, oh, no, going into reviews used to be the worst thing of all time. And then he, like, has a joke with you two minutes later. So, um, yeah, you definitely um, learned, learned that quick. <laughs> That's incredible because I, I find it funny hearing that apparently, he, he, as a bloke, he stutters. But as soon as he goes to give someone a bail, he doesn't mix any of his <laughs> words up. So, he's a ripper. Now, with your 2016, and I think you you were kind of injured throughout the year or towards the back end, so you didn't play the back end of that year. Um, at what point did you start talking to Richmond? Because that was obviously the clear move that was going to happen. And kind of just give us the reasons why you thought Richmond was the best club and is sort of crowds moving down to Victoria or moving home? What was the biggest draw card for you? Um, oh, yeah, that was definitely a big one. Um, getting in front of, I don't know, I, I thought 60,000 was going to be a big number when I got to Richmond I think that was my first game and then obviously we've been pretty lucky the last three years to play in front of a hundred thousand a couple of times and 90,000 in finals games so um, yeah that was probably the biggest draw card and obviously mum and 
dad and my family being all in Melbourne, um, it was, I know, it was kind of always going to happen eventually that I would get back to Melbourne and, um, yeah, play play for, for a Victorian team. Um, it was just, when it, when it was going to happen was um, going to be the, I guess, the thing that was going to happen eventually in my career. But, yeah, I, I had surgery in, I think, about around 16, in, in 2016. And then... Um, I stayed stayed home for a couple of weeks, kind of decided what was going to be the best move next year, either to re-sign with Gold Coast or um, make the move to Richmond or back to Victoria, I mean. And, um, yeah, we, we decided pretty much six or four or five weeks out from the year finishing that I was going to uh, make the move. And then it was pretty much up to Gold Coast. And um, I, was, I was tossing up between two two different clubs, so Richmond and... Hawthorne and then yeah decided to go with Richmond just felt the 2016 was was a bad year for them and um, they still had a lot of amazing players on their list and um, there are some All-Australians, Coleman medalist and um, Brownlow medalist that right now you can say so um, yeah I just felt that it was just a, a poor year and um, if, we, if everything went right for them that anything could happen and um, yeah it worked out pretty well. It certainly has worked out well indeed. And this could be complete bullshit, mate. But is, is there any truth behind that the Gold Coast boys sang you a song when you before you left? <laughs> um, yeah, well, it was probably more like the Mad Mondays or if we had a few drinks after games. Um, yeah. you know, there was a lot of rumours going around about me going to Richmond. They always find out everything, that's for sure. But um, yeah, it would just be Mad Monday. I know everyone kind of stops and then someone would just chuck the Richmond theme song on and you get you, <laughs> you cop that <laughs> you along with them and then yeah move on <laughs> we used to uh, do that a bit when I was up there oh uh, it's all fun and games now setting the scene now it's 2017 you move to the Tigers you're now at one of the biggest clubs or biggest sporting entities in Australia in, in the Richmond Tigers what happens after that like what are your immediate impressions you're obviously surrounded by some superstar players now the facilities must have been much better. And how did that season go for you? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know, I was just so nervous, I guess, coming in. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect at all. I knew um, I knew that Melbourne was like a massive footy city compared to the Gold Coast. That was probably the biggest change, I guess. Like if you walk down Swan Street in Richmond, you usually pass a couple of Richmond fans. You like give you a little wave or a, or a nod. Um, so I think that that was definitely the biggest change probably from the Gold Coast. Just, I know, your general life, um, you're just a little bit more more noticed. And, um, yeah, well, I know. I, I look at the Gold Coast facilities. Today we drove past them and I'm like, Jesus, they are humongous and look pretty schmick. So I'm like, oh, I wouldn't mind having a look at them. So, um, yeah, I think just being a punt road, like it's absolutely amazing driving in there and you've got the G in the background and, Everyone's beeping, tooting you when you're training on Putton Road and yelling out things to you. So, um, yeah, I guess you're just re really in the heart of the city, and it's such a such a big club. And obviously, um, 17 was an amazing year and really kicked us off. I think well, we got over 100,000 members. Well, now and I think in 2018 we had that, and it's just yeah, I, I'm like really couldn't get much better over the last um, three years for, for myself. And yeah, also, and obviously when you went to the Tigers in 2017, you have this amazing year. Uh, you win a flag. It's pretty unexpected as well. So you mustn't, you mustn't have been expecting that. Um, how, did, how did the grand final week go down for you? I mean, what was the nerves, the emotions, the feelings? Yeah, oh, it, was, it was a bit of an up and down whole year. I think we won our first five and then lost our, lost our next four after that. So um, I don't know. I had a lot of doubts thinking like, Geez, have I even made it like a right right choice? Well, five and four, um, I know, slowly, slowly heading down the ladder. And then, um, yeah, I think it was like after the bye, we just hit amazing form. And I don't think anyone would have beaten us in that in that final series. So, um, yeah, the grand grand final week was like oddly normal. It was, it was really normal. The only thing that was different was the parade, which for some reason, I don't know why, I was so nervous for. Um, so we we uh I think we did yeah we did our captain's run, got the bus over to the to the city where we all get dropped off and it was just 
such like a weird weird experience and I was I know I guess like just because that was the only different thing for the week that's why I think that was why I was so nervous because we still came in for our Monday review still trained had the normal day off and everything so um yeah nothing really changed besides that and that's why I think that was nervous and then game day it starts at 2 30 so you kind of wake up have brekkie and then and then you're in there but um yeah, yeah it's just a such a electric feel when you're when you're out there you know um there was a lot of Adelaide Adelaide fans at the ground and they're setting up stuff for the pre-game um entertainment while you're warming up and I don't know it's just yeah it's just incredible I've been to a couple of grand finals and obviously watched them all when I was younger and uh, yeah just to be out there was was an amazing experience and then afterwards you've obviously you obviously won the grand final and then afterwards, where do you go for the after party? And who would you say would have been best on in 2017 <laughs> grand final after party? Yeah, so we went, we went to Bond nightclub. <clears throat> Is it called nightclub? Bond, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. And it was, demographic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was oh, it was pretty good. It was just, I don't know, a bit of, bit of carry on. Everyone is pissed. There's heaps of people there, heaps of random people in the nightclub who you've never seen before, which was pretty funny and um yeah then well the sunday we had the um family day when we pre- present the club to uh, the cup to all the members and things like that it was just oh, it was just such a full-on full-on week i think monday was best and fairest tuesday was mad monday and then by wednesday come around everyone was cooked and didn't want to see each other again so um, <laughs> yeah i know that I can't. Even, oh, I don't know. It was so so long ago. There was a fair few that were best on. You can probably guess who was best on. Yeah. <laughs> Just use our imaginations a little bit. Yeah. Now, in in uh in 2018, you guys have obviously uh gotten knocked out by the Pies in the prelim final. That must have been a real hunger for you guys to then go into 2019 and win that and win that flag, especially after an average start to the season in 2019 as well. Yeah. Oh, that was a. Uh... A weird, uh, weird week that 2018 uh, <laughs> prelim and, and leading to that grand final. I guess um, I know you get so close. You, I think I'd rather lose in a grand final than um, than in a prelim because the week, like we we knew what we missed out on. I think for me, it was like I just knew how fun and um, what an experience the grand final was, and obviously we um, could have been a chance to win it. But I think on grand final day in 2018, I just drove down to Mornington didn't watch any of the game and just I oh, know I just wanted the week to be over and over and finish. So um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I would say that, that that drove us in, in the next year because I guess we had that um, taste of taste of glory in seventeen and then um, to be so close. But I, know, I guess you kind of like feel like it's a wasted season if you don't win it. Um, yeah, definitely definitely drove us the next year. We obviously picked up some pretty good sent a half forward from the Gold Coast who, who <laughs> helped us uh, get there. But, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it drove us to, um, I guess, take that step step further and, um, yeah, obviously help us out in 2019. And what did it mean for you? If you had to summarise it, you know, in a few words, what does it mean for you to, to have been the, the um, best and fairest in the 2019 Premiership year? Yeah, well, I think I cried on best and fairest night. I did cry. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, no, I think it was just the whole, um, uh, just during the night, the thing that probably got me was tr- during the night, just the names that who had won it previously. Um, so I'll just, I know, just kind of like, as they were rolling through during the night, I'm just like, see names, um, like a player now, Jack Rewalt, Martin, Cochin, I'm just like, oh, like it'd be amazing to, to be on a list with, with those types of players who are, real like champions of the Richmond footy club and uh, obviously going to the grand final we had Matt Monday the night before so that wasn't great um, so it was a big week leading into it but uh, yeah I, I think it's been proud of like where you, where you come from and um, yeah obviously winning a premiership in the same year was was uh, pretty awesome and yeah just being proud of yourself really just of what, what you've been able to achieve and um, obviously had a lot of setbacks with injuries and um, getting traded, being away from family and stuff. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it all makes it worthwhile. Well, you had a truly exceptional year. So you definitely deserve to be 
uh, amongst those elite names. And now the last thing that I wanted to ask you was just a little bit about, about Dimmer. He's such an amazing coach, an amazing character. And I just wanted to sort of know from your perspective and your, from your relationship with him, what's he like as a bloke and how has he brought in that sort of really fun look that you guys have got going on? I don't know how to describe it, but you're always laughing on the field. Yeah. Um, well, my first interaction, I guess, was with Dimmer. So I, um, Went over to his house as I was before I was making my decision, and um, the thing that kind of got me was that he didn't really want to know about footy. He just asked me how, like, what I like to do off the field. Asked me about my family, what I like um, if I, if I'm studying and stuff. And I think, kind of, I'm not I'm not a footy head. I do enjoy my footy, but I think that's kind of why I was a bit more a bit more attracted to go um, to Richmond, just because he just wanted to know me as a person and. I think that's just what he is. He's just so genuine um, in everything that he does. His pregame, we go into pregame meetings and um, he'll have a, a background story about um, a team from maybe the, the NFL or the NBA that reminds him of us or even oh, we've had some odd ones about the uh, moon landing that he that reminds me um, him, him of us. So there's always like a good story and just makes you forget about the game for that little bit um, pregame and, um, yeah, he just has genuine care. And I, I was pretty lucky, obviously, coming in 17 and he just kind of opened himself up. Um, him and him and Trent Cochran as well would just really open themselves up to the players and just encourage everyone to be be yourself. You know, you're not expected to have the same personality as each other and the same uh, strengths as a player. So, really, we can go out there and just be ourselves. And I think that's why you see us enjoying our footy so much and laughing at half time and laughing pre-game and yeah I'll, I'll I'll never forget my first game at Richmond against uh, Carlton in 17 I just couldn't believe how relaxed and carefree everyone was and I, I'm just like we're gonna get smashed like no <laughs> one cares but it's just it's just how it is like yeah everything's just so so cruisy and they're happy for you to just if you feel like I know sitting around telling jokes and listening to the music then go go do it you don't have to um be bumping into bags and, and be like everyone else. That's honestly such an amazing insight to have. And I think a lot of people would, would wonder that as well. So, I mean, I've enjoyed this interview so much, mate. Thank you so much for being a good sport with the stitch ups and giving us some okay. amazing stories too, brother. Um, Ponchi, unless you've got everything, mate. Yeah. Oh, mate, once again, uh, as a massive Richmond supporter and Sun supporter, but, uh, Richmond in this instance, man, it's been such a, such a big insight. And honestly, man, I've actually sat here and listened to you and Jake's conversation. I've actually taken so much in from this, like getting a bit more insight to the four walls of, of Richmond, a club I've loved for so long. It's just, it's awesome to hear. And it definitely shows on the outside the way you guys go about it. So mate, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty much all from us. No, the Steve Charles is great. That's actually, I've done it. I've, I've been in a few things where they stitch you up, but I've never seen that much depth go into a stitch up. <laughs> we do our we put, we put a lot of work in. Don't worry, mate. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Well, thank you so much, guys. Dion Prestia. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning into the Hello Game Day podcast. If you're listening right now, that means you've made it to the end of the episode, and maybe even enjoyed what you've heard. If so, you can join us on all major social media platforms as well as audio podcasting platforms and YouTube. Or just head on over to our website at www.hellogameday.co and hit subscribe to join our mailing list where you can receive weekly updates on the podcast. We'd like to give a massive thank you to our producer, Ethan Curtin. Find him on Instagram at Room10Company as well as Equal Tech who have given us an office space to work in and our beautiful graphic design is done by Chev at Graphic Design. He's been the punch. He's been the moose. And next time you drop in, bring a mate.